This song is called Playing the Fool. It's off my new tape called Leisure, my band Be Cool Cowboy. It's also available digitally. It should be on streaming services by June 2021. But if you want to grab a copy and help out the channel, that would be awesome. You can do that at becoolcowboy.bandcamp.com. So I figured this would be a good song to show you the mix, kind of show you what I'm working with with it, and give you some ideas as to some things you can do mix-wise with the Mile 12. So let's listen to the song uh, so far. I mean, it's pretty much mixed, but I'll go through how I've been approaching it. Hidden gold, nobody knows the secrets you keep at the bottom of honest head to toe. So that's like the beginning and uh, a little bit of the chorus. So this song is pretty simple. It's just uh, an electric guitar that kind of is varied throughout the song to keep it interesting. Nord Drum 3P is these two tracks. We got the bass here. This is the vocal and the acoustic. This is the uh, higher vocal that comes in. And this is the double on the chorus. So I guess I'll show you. I started out just playing just doing this track, which is the acoustic and the vocal. Uh, I just kind of did this quickly. I wasn't thinking it would be uh, anything I would use. Mostly I was doing this just to work on it and, and you know use the Model 12 and get acclimated more to the Model 12. So I recorded this guitar and vocal together and I didn't do it to a metronome or anything, but I was surprised that I kept in time pretty good and I was able to track the Nord Drum 3P after, which is something I usually don't do. I usually try to do the drums first to some kind of scratch track or at least a scratch track that is uh, to a metronome. So, but I was really surprised by how well I played and that's I think a testament to practicing for years with a drum machine. Um, and I was gonna also mention that the guitar is out of tune. Uh, I definitely need to get some new guitars. So for this track, I do have a little bit of compression on it. I use compression for acoustic and vocal track, the bass and the guitars. And I was going to mention a little bit about the compression because that's a question that always comes up. How do these sound? How come you don't use them a lot? Well, the reason I don't use them often is because these compressors are essentially like ketchup. Uh, they're only something you want to use once in a while and sparingly on certain types of foods. These compression knobs are hard-coded to have certain parameters that you can't adjust. So they're really only good for certain sources or putting them a little bit on something and not using them for everything. Uh, I, I would think that these were probably geared mostly toward uh, vocals because this machine is aimed at podcasters. So this is probably a really good way to even out people's vocals. If you have guests, you got somebody who's not, you know, great with using a mic. I'm not personally that great with using a vocal mic, so these sometimes help when I'm doing some voiceovers. But it's not something that you want to use extensively on everything, and that's why I don't really use it that much. Uh, this doesn't work for what I'm trying to do. I'll show you what it sounds like if you slam stuff with it. It doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Took my time, now I'm ready to cruise. I'm your man if you need a dude. Yeah. Out on your own, under the sun, over the trees. Personally, think these compressors sound the best when you set them so that the light is kind of blinking on, so that it's you know it's getting compressed, but it's not something that's 
crazy, crazily getting squashed. Uh, and that's the same with the bass, because the bass can be a very varied instrument if uh, you don't pay attention to how you're playing it. It's I think these types of compression for bass especially is is good, but it's often better to just be able to play the instrument without uh, needing to, you know, make it uniform with a compressor. And but you know the the way that the strings are with the low string being a lot fatter than the upper strings, uh, there's a lot of variation to bass depending on how many different strings you're using. So I tend to just use the low string on my bass and try to play it very evenly so that I don't need a lot of compression to even the bass sound out. So uh, let's listen. To, I guess we could listen to the bass really quick and and listen to the compression on that. Like I think a little bit on there, and so like I said, the light is blinking on. I think that's the best way to use it. You know, there's obviously a little bit of compression on there, but you know, if, when you hear it, when it's maxed out, it's not really squashing. And I, I just feel like anything above 12 on these starts to get uh, just too, you can just hear it. Maybe that's an effect you want to go for with certain stuff, but it's definitely not an effect that I think sounds particularly good. and. The last thing I have is a little bit of compression on the guitars. Probably don't even need it for these, but uh, again, just to use it and give you an idea of what it sounds like. So I just double tracked the guitars. It actually sounds okay, um, you know, slamming the guitars more. I think guitar can be one of those instruments that uh, is good, especially cleaner sounding guitar, uh, electric can be one of those instruments that benefits from compression. I personally never got too much into using compression on guitars, but that kind of makes me want to check it out. Um, one other thing I should mention is I do have some effects on here that's giving it that like echo I'm using. Uh, type 6 studio and I think that's just the default I thought that that sounded pretty cool uh, in order to use the effects you need to have um, this slider up you got to have this button press for aux 2 and then that allows you to dial it in on the aux 2 knob and you can see here it says aux 2 FX so I just have that effect on the guitars uh, the, the uh, main vocals acoustic and then the the, the uh, other vocal tracks, just to give it a little bit of space or push it back a little bit further in the mix. I always think of reverb as as kind of when you want to mess with the distance that it, it sounds like it is from where you're listening. I think it, I think it helps, and I think it helps to kind of put it in, you know, push it back into the uh, sonic spectrum, so that it sounds like it's a little bit further away. Here's all the tracks that have it on there. Hidden gold, nobody knows the secrets you keep in the bottom of honest head to toe. I'm playing the fool. I took my 
my time now I'm ready to cruise I'm just kind of doing this to show you like an exaggerated version of it I'm your man if you need a dude yeah out on your own under the sun over the trees back home out on your own under the sun over the trees back home So, you know, the, the effect is called studio. I think it's meant to sound almost like a plate. Um, it's not like a, I mean, you can affect the time, but I kind of wanted to just give it a little bit of an echo. I, I think with these, it's usually best to set this at zero. This is just what I've been doing, zero. And then uh, I usually start at zero for the, when I dial it in and then I decide like, okay, is that too much, too little? And at least for this track, um, the main track, I thought that it sounded better just like uh, dialed back a little bit. I took my time, now I'm ready to cruise. I cut my hand, but my aim is true. My aim is true. My aim is true. Out on Chasing the sun over the trees and back home out on your own. That's pretty subtle. I mean, it's, there's definitely a little bit on there. Uh, I just don't want it to sound like too artificial. I, I, I tend to just like a lot drier sounding stuff. Maybe you like stuff more with more wet on it. Uh, and then you can do that, you know. Obviously, there's a lot you could dial in if you want. But I tend to like stuff just very dry and upfront. But you know, with something like the other double tracks, you know, you kind of want them to be pushed back a little bit or sound like they're further away. So that's why I have it turned up more. And then the guitars, I think it just sounds cool too. I want those to be not as upfront as well. And I just want to have like the the core of the song being like these four tracks. You know, the drums, bass, and the vocals, guitar, and then everything else. Maybe push it back a little bit and give the, you know, main vocal guitar acoustic a little bit of, of uh, a little bit of reverb too. So let's just listen to the drums and I'll show you kind of why I decided to do the low end of the song mixed like this. Um, I think the guitars, I should mention too, I think they sound great. Just kind of just with that little bit of that compression and then just... I think I kind of, I really like the sound, and that's something I was just talking about with uh, Reckless Eric at one point. Um, we were talking on email too, and he mentioned, you know, with these EQs, it's about, to him, you know, like just sweetening the sound a little bit. And I really like that idea. And uh, Michael and I were talking about this too, where it's like, you know, you want to just kind of get your sound the best that you can make it sound before you even get it into the machine. So the best your stuff is ever going to sound is how it sounds before it's recorded. So if you find something that's like really out of whack, uh, and this is why it's, it's crazy that some people are able to dump things into a DAW and then they never finish it or they just tweak it and make it sound like it's something that... I don't know. There's like, how, how do you, how do you do that? You know, that, that's so much work to sit there with all the plugins and just manipulate and transform this stuff into sounding uh, like nothing like what you recorded. I don't know. To me, I think I'm just a lot lazier and I'd rather get the stuff right so that I don't have to do much mixing. You know, I feel like the song is mostly mixed by the time it reaches, uh, once the stop button, you know, after I press stop on the record, it's like, 
there it is. Like that's that's most of the song. And then you know, the, like like Reckless Eric was saying, it's like just use these to kind of sweeten the sounds that you already have, and and that's it. So let's talk about the drums and why I did the EQ like this. Hidden gold, nobody knows the secrets you keep. Turning this down. I'm playing the fool. So one thing I need to get better at is how to mix the Nord sounds coming out of the Nord Drum 3P. Um, they're just like very snappy and tend to have a lot of low end. So that's why I cut these a bit. I decided to cut the low a little bit because I felt like the kick drum was like really potent and powerful on the low end. And one thing to mention, I always think about this uh, is like something in the low end has to be the uh, the king down there, you know? Something needs to take uh, the crown or something needs to, uh, this is a really uh, bad metaphor or analogy, but something down there needs to be the most prevalent and for me in this song I think it's the bass and that's why I chose to cut this a little bit and then boost the lows on the bass. I also cut um, the lows on the guitar, uh, the main track, just because it's almost like there's like too much presence and too much authority with like that low end of the acoustic and vocal so I think it made sense to kind of cut some of that out and you also just don't want there to be excess stuff down there especially from this track because it's that guitar I have is pretty bassy and then for this other track I cut the um, lows all the way that's the double of the vocal and that's again to make it sound like it's further back and also in case there's any like rumbling or something but yeah we could go through those two real quick but so that's kind of the, the reasons I made these choices for the drums uh, I wanted to cut the lows a little bit because the kick drum was pretty um, prevalent and then this too the Nord with the digital samples uh, it, they're very I mean they're digital samples so they, they have a lot of top end on them uh, so these EQs uh, cut 10 kilohertz and I dropped it by uh, I can't see what the numbers are but uh, I don't know maybe like three and then the mids so I think I mentioned this in one of the other videos but the mids this knob is kind of like your cue you find what frequency you want to cut or boost, and then you use the second knob. This is the um, you know decibels where you increase or decrease it. So uh, let's see if we can kind of sh show you like what I was going for with that. Um, I'm just gonna mute one of these. Like this particular frequency, like 8K, there's like almost too much uh, information with like the hi hat and the snare. So that's why I kind of swept through this. And that's one way you could do it is if you boost it. I just wanted to be mindful of people's ears. But if you boost this and then kind of sweep it, um, I mean, obviously, you don't want to just like sweep through and just be like, oh, this doesn't sound good. I got to take it out. Like if you hear something that doesn't sound right, try to determine where that is and then take it out like um so I, I don't know to me like those upper mids and that's also why like i was saying i took the highs out a little bit but then this is still 
somewhere in that higher register still there's like that like almost like uh i don't even know how to describe the sound it's almost like really like sandpapery kind of a high-pitched sound and it's like that's what i'm trying to like notch out a little bit so i'm going to 8k and then dropping it by like again like maybe three so and i think that just made the drums sit better in the mix uh, and also just take out some of that harshness. That's, I guess that's really what I was trying to say is that the digital samples, um, and that's what I mean, I gotta get better at the word and, and figure out like just taking out some of the highs, make it sound a little more, I don't know, like it sounds like, like drums sound like on the four track, I guess that's the best way of putting it. Cause like the four track, it kind of cuts frequencies above 17 uh, K with the tape. So, uh, there's kind of like a natural roll off and I, I just think it sounds I don't really like the hi-hat being too loud and I don't know, just more of like a vintage -y sound, if you will, I guess is what I'm trying to say. More of like a 70s sound, I suppose. Uh, okay, so then, you know, drums and bass. I like, I don't know, to me this song is maybe just more of like a back track, maybe something off like Sea Change a little bit. And I love the bass on that album and it's just really fat and, and kind of like, uh, almost like not there or it doesn't really like stick out. It's not like too trebly or too high mids. It's just kind of, it's there, you feel it, but if it was missing, you'd miss it, right? And so uh, with this... The reason I did this is because I don't really hear there to be big, that big of a difference. I guess when it's all the way up, you can hear it. I mean, there, tend not, there tends not to be that much bass information above uh, 10 anyway. Uh, sometimes like that more of that uh, like trebly sound. I think that's more like high mids um, So I just kind of have a tendency to cut it because it's like I don't really hear it Cut it. I don't, I don't really hear it affecting that Too much and I also have a lot of things that I want to like like this track I have bumped the highs so it's again kind of the same idea as the low end, right? It's like there's gonna be tracks up here that are kind of the uh, the top of the spectrum or the king of the high end. It's like, uh, you know, I want this to be like this to have that information because that sounds the best, like having the vocal have a little bit of air on it. You know, we could, we could show you that in a minute too. But anyway, that's why I decided to cut that and boost it there. So, and I, I like just listening to the drums and the bass and kind of mixing that too, just to get those, that like tighter, low end together, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. I should mention that the drum track, uh, I like, I didn't mess up at the end there, but I kind of did. But I think it sounds fine once it's in the mix. And it's th those kinds of uh, happy accidents that you you know, when you record multi-track like this outside of the computer, it's those things you would have never thought to do, but uh, sometimes they become like the quirks or something, just a little, a little something in there that, you know, maybe you didn't intend to do, but eh, you know, it works. Oh, so the vocal. All right. So let's listen to it with the vocal and the, like the main part of the song, like I was saying, drum bass. Nobody knows the secrets you keep at the bottom of honest head to toe. I'm playing the fool. I took my time, now I'm ready to cruise. I'm young man. 
Yes, yeah, it's, it's like I, I just feel like when you cut some of the lows out of that, it. I don't know. To me, when you have it, even when it's all the way down, it sounds very, almost like done. If that makes any sense, it just sounds it sounds great with cutting the low. So I cut it a little bit just to get it out of the way of this stuff, and then, really though, you know, boosting this was a big part of it. Yeah. felt like this kind of gives it that I think you could kind of hear it right it's like let me play it again it's like when you take this out of here it nobody knows. it almost sounds like you've thrown like a blanket over the speaker or something secrets you keep at the bottom of bring you know bringing that that uh frequency range back now it sounds it's got like you know that airy sound i think a lot of people want to go for uh it kind of gives it more presence on the top so that was why i decided to bump it there i took my time now That's my falsetto that you can feel free to make fun of, because uh, that's not really something. It sounds good in the mix, but by itself, it's a little funky. But uh, so that one, like I was saying, I, this was all the way down, so it's kind of if there's any low end, I was definitely further back when I recorded that, and it's like I don't want this to be up front. And like I was saying before, I feel like when you have things when that have a lot of low end for low end information. That just feels to me like it has this authority in the mix so it seems like it's like prevalent um and also in case there's any like rumble or stuff i just wanted to cut it out and i think it it makes it sound further back and then i think i had i just i even forgot what this was set at i think i had did i have it like this well let's listen to it i'll listen to it with this track i'm okay with playing So like again, I want this one to be the main vocal. I want that to be more of the the king of the high end there, and then I want this one to be, um, you know, there and and helping out, but but to also sound like it's further back. And that's also why it has more of that echo room sound on it. Around I think two or three hundred, I increased it a little bit. Let's see if we can figure out why I did that. I just don't remember. Okay. I took my time, now I'm ready to cruise. I don't know, I guess I felt that it just kind of 
sounded good by giving it a little bit of like a low mid bump there. Maybe because it uh, helps it on the lower end of this track, but it's, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I kind of wish I had done this closer to when I recorded the song because I forgot why I chose to do some of this stuff. But anyway, I feel like this video is going to be pretty long, so I think I'm going to cut it there. Next time, maybe we'll try to figure out this master section EQ. We'll, we'll try to make a master track. Yeah, I hope this was educational for you, just to give you a couple ideas of how I approach some of this stuff, and uh, maybe some ideas for your next mixing project or song project. And uh, if you want to come along on this journey with me, I'm going to be doing a lot more Model 12 videos for the rest of this year, and also some other tutorials with the 4-track and the DP-04, so just don't forget to subscribe if you want to, you know, check out those videos. Sundays at noon are going to be the day I'm going to be doing stuff. So thanks for watching and I want to just uh, thank all my patrons for helping support the work I do at 424 Recording. I'll put the, put the slide up of everybody and uh, Godspeed my friends. Make sure you do something you want to do today, all right?